Hey everyone, it's Joseph Shepard. And your girl, Miss Laganja Astrancha. And welcome back to another episode of <gasps> Queening Out. Out. Hey, you know, I'm just so happy that we get that now. I know, right? It's we're about to have to go to Zooms though, starting I soon. I know, and then that's gonna be so very- So then we're, we're, we're probably gonna be off, but. Yeah. It's been nice to have all of these episodes in the beginning here together. Yes, together. In LA. In LA. In the same space. Same space. Without technical difficulties. Yes, and we're all just right here in person. It's that's like right. a good vibe. Yeah. Good yeah. vibe. Do we have one more together before I leave? I think so, right? Yes. Next week I think is we our do, last yeah. one Next in person, week. and mm -hmm. then. I'm off to the Work the World Tour, Mama. You excited? I am excited. Yeah, I mean, I have been going nonstop. I don't know how it is. I feel like every year I'm like, I catch myself being like, this is the hardest I've ever pushed myself. Mm -hmm. This is the hardest. This is literally the hardest I've ever pushed myself. <laughs> I basically haven't stopped since I got back from Thailand almost a month ago. So uh, I'm a little nervous about exhaustion mm -hmm. since I'm going into like a 30, I think 30 or 28 uh, city tour wow. in like 33 days. So we basically have no days off, but, uh, I am excited to be with my sisters. I'm excited to travel the U S I'm on the first leg of the tour. Well, that's awesome. So last year when I was on the work, the world tour, I did like leg two or three, which was international, mm -hmm. which was amazing, but I'm excited to, to travel the U S I feel like right now we really need the representation in our country. So I'm excited to get out there and Ready for our work, the world security to put anyone who needs to be put in place. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, are you? Do you have like things planned for? Yeah. Work the so world? this year's theme is Matrix, Ooh. like the Matrix movie, and I am playing a Mrs. Anderson, not Mister Mrs. Anderson. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. I've been rehearsing with the dancers because you know I like to be a part of the mm -hmm. choreography. So working with Ryan and Philip on that, which is super exciting and getting my costume from Thailand and, you know, just all the final details are coming together. So I'm excited. What about you? What What's going on in your neck of the woods? I saw that you just dropped another recent expose. I did. I dropped with Miss Taste. With Miss Taste. I yes. dropped a recent expose with Taste. Um, and then after we're done today, I go and I chat with Bimini. Nice. Yes. Love Getting her. the UK girls on yes. whatever it is. Um, She's yeah. international, honey. She's international. Um, yeah. So been doing that and getting all this stuff ready. Um, editing our queening out episodes. I think I think a lot of people don't know I edit the queening out episodes. Yeah, and fully like does a turnaround <laughs> in less than twenty four hours. It's cuckoo. Well, hey, cuckoo. We have to we have to get the fans. You know, that's right. And we wanna we wanna keep them fed early and on time. Yes. And if you want me to keep feeding you early and on time, be sure to click that little link right down below. It's the Kickstarter. I have five days left, but I am at 50%. So we, okay. let's let's get it going. Yes. Come um, on, you guys. Let's keep this content yes, in motion. In motion. Well, Laganja, I think it's time we go into our inbox. We had a lot of messages this week. Did we? We did. Okay. So the first message is from Momo. And Momo says, hello, this is Momo from Venezuela. I'm currently living in Berlin. I have two questions. Joseph, when you worked as an anchor at Georgia State University, one of your projects was being gay coming out stories. You showed us the stories of four individuals, but we didn't get to learn about your story. How did you come out? Ooh, I love that. Also, you're adorable. What's your type? <laughs> Thank you. Laganja, you were the most iconic, memorable, transcending, magnetic, timeless, groundbreaking, real, sickening, fierce, lovely, human, and <laughs> charismatic Rue girl. You have the superpower of making people happy. How do you make yourself happy? Oh. Any words of wisdom about self-love? Also, what is your type? Thank you. Best Momo. Love it. Okay, you go first. You were addressed okay. first, Shepard. Okay. Shepard. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much, Momo, for the question. Um, yeah, I did back when I was a senior um, at Georgia State University. How long ago was that? Ten years ago. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I had to be shady. <laughs> we're both, you know, more established. Yes, it's okay. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. And it's so funny because, like, I was, like, thinking about that right when I said 10 and I was about to be like, oh, like, five years ago. Yeah, I was like, no, no, Mama, no. we've been out of school for we've a decade. Out, yes, yeah, let it quite some in. time. <laughs> uh, so my, my final senior project was we had to do some type of film project. And I got four different individuals all on the LGBTQIA plus um, – spectrum and I interviewed them and had them tell their stories but my story is um I was outed by Instagram how 
So I, um, I was brought up very conservative. My family was very conservative. And uh, when I was at school in Atlanta, I met somebody on Twitter. And... Uh, As one does. Yes, I slid into their DMs. They slid back into mine. I, they ended up living in New York. So I flew to New York, and this was right when Instagram had started, and the first picture I ever put up was myself and this person holding hands, and I guess my mom had been stalking my Instagram, and I get on a flight to go back to school, I get off the flight, and there's like 30 missed calls, and my mom was like, you're going to hell, I got all of that stuff, uh -huh. she did not like it, she didn't talk to me for about two or three years, Wow. Um, and I kind of got like multiple jobs to support my way back through college, and then um, my dad was okay with it, because my dad ended up being gay in the end, so right. it's, it's a, it was a full circle everything, but um, yeah, that was kind of my story, it was, it was brutal, it was yeah. rough, it at Wasn't the end of the fun. day, do you regret posting the picture? Do you wish it could have come out another way? Or are you like, oh, rip wish, the Band-Aid off? I'm glad that the Band-Aid was ripped off, but yeah. I would have loved to have had that moment to be able to say exactly how I feel. Sure. But I do believe that ripping the Band-Aid off probably gave um, my mom a different perspective on everything. And yeah. I think that she already got to see me living my life. And it kind of wasn't like... I surprised her. Sure. she. I mean, she was surprised, but it wasn't me doing the surprising. I can't believe she was Inspector Gadget back then. I mean, right? She like, was so many parents still yes. today don't know how to work the Instagram. So I'm like, wow, she was with the times. She was with the times. She was right ready. At, she was, <laughs> right. Yeah. That's crazy. So, Miss Laganja. Okay, yeah, right. So how do I keep myself happy? Well, I think work genuinely makes me happy. That is why I am a workaholic and... Never stop, always keep going. I'm happiest when I'm on the road, when I'm meeting all of you, when I'm getting to do what I love. Um, but I also love a good Netflix and chill. Mm. I love a good, you know, movie outing. I really definitely missed that when Corona went down. I never realized how much like I still enjoy going to the movie yeah. theaters until it was taken away from me. I love to shop. I'm definitely a shopaholic. I don't recommend that as a, a thing to do. Um, because it gets expensive, <laughs> but I do, I do love to shop. That makes me feel really good. And definitely yoga. I think yoga is something that really keeps me regulated. I'll be honest. I've had zero time or energy or effort to go and do that recently. Mm -hmm. But when I'm in my happiest place, I am going to yoga regularly to sort of keep my cycle on a, on a schedule. I love that you said, <laughs> I love that you went into like each detail, you like your Netflix, you like uh -huh. your movies. Yeah. Have you seen any movies recently? Let's see. What was the most recent movie theater movie? Oh, uh, I can see it now. It was in 4d. Okay. I fell asleep immediately. Okay. Uh, oh, a scream, the new recent scream. Okay. Yeah. And I love the franchise, but I, you know, I think because I have been working so much, I got in that chair, it started doing its little rock and baby, and she rock abide were. me out. <laughs> she rock abide me out. Yeah. So I want to see it. Everyone told me it was a really yeah, good movie. Really good. Was it? Yeah. yeah. So I'll have to rewatch it, but. Uh, yeah, no, there hasn't been much time recently to go to the movie theater. I saw yesterday um, The Little Mermaid in 4D. How was it? Great. Is it? Literally. I love a 4D experience. It's so, it's there so was fun. this one moment, okay, because like, you know, there's like ships and it's yeah. rocking and all yeah. this stuff. There was one moment where I didn't expect anything to happen and that water just squirted in uh -huh. my face. I screamed in the theater. That's I what he like, said. Oof. Yes, uh -huh. exactly. Right, I squirted in his face. Yeah, great movie. Okay, Great movie. I'm excited. I want to see it. Hallie All I've did. seen online is just the reading of Ursula's makeup. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of reading of that makeup. Yeah. I mean, it looked a little better in post, but it still okay. was not. Yeah. It's not the best of the best. I've been hearing Ginger Men should have really taken the role. That's all I'm going to say. Hey. I haven't seen it yet, so I'll make my opinion when I see it. But uh, that's that's the word on the street. Well, we have another word on the street. Okay. Would you like to take this email from Neth? Hello, Joseph and Laganja. First of all, we are big fans of both of you. By we, I mean Paolo, my boyfriend, Lupita, and Oscar are two Jack Russells. And yes, drag is for everyone. Thank you for gracing our screens with laughter, cries, entertainment, and information. It really does brighten our days. My question is for the talented and fabulous Laganja. Mm. Have you ever looked at another queen's outfit or performance and thought, I wish I would have come up with this idea or concept dress? 
The question doesn't have to harbor any ill will or jealousy, <laughs> simply admiration for another drag queen's act or garment. Sending you both a lot of love all the way from Libsyn, Portugal, Ooh. Andre. Well, thank you, Andre. I loved your clarification saying I don't need to be shady. You're very sweet. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, all the time, right? All the time I see things that I'm like, oh, I wish I'd thought of that. Like one moment that comes to mind immediately is Sasha Velour with the rose petals. Obviously I would have done weed leaves, but I really <laughs> loved that concept and that idea. And yeah, I'm super inspired by other Queens all the time. That's why when I do travel, I make it a point to go see local drag to see what's out there to keep myself, you know, up on the latest and greatest um, recently I was in Seattle at, at queer bar and there was a, a performer whose name I wish I remembered, but very creative. And, and she did this sort of witch themed number and she used like baby powder. Mm -hmm. It was very effective, super cool. So I keep a little notebook and I jot ideas down and, and, you know, try to reinterpret things in my own way, but Definitely am inspired by other people. Another moment I'm thinking of that I wish I'd come up with was Violet Tchotchke's reveal from the oh, jumpsuit. Yes. That was super amazing. The way that that outfit opened up. So cool. So, yeah, I'm always keeping my eyes open for something to inspire me or, or help push my art in another direction. Have you ever done something and had somebody be like, I need that or I want that? Um, well, I think my entrances, yeah, I think my entrances definitely inspired many queens, not only on RuPaul's Drag Race, but just in the world to make sure you are big and bright when you enter a room and, and, and leave a lasting impression. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are you ready for some voicemails? I love voicemails. And if you guys want to email us or leave us a voicemail, don't forget you can do so. Our email is laganjoes at gmail.com. That's L-A-N-J-O-E-S at gmail.com. And what is our telephone number? Do you remember? Our phone number is 805-624-5402. All you got to do is just leave a message. I think it may ring once and then it goes, here's a voicemail. And our voices aren't on it. So, like, I guess we should do that. We should do that. We should do that. But our voices aren't on it. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> leave us leave us, um, leave us, us a voicemail, just like these individuals who left us voicemails. So let's get into the first one. Hey, Shepard. Hey, Laganja. Huge fan of the show. I was just wondering, um, the season six reunion had a super awkward clip of <laughs> Adore's makeup with you and I was just wondering what exactly prompted that situation happening um slash I there was also rumors years ago of something similar happening between Courtney and uh Jocelyn Fox so I was wondering if anything uh at the live finale aired or anything else that went into that just curious huge fan I love the show love you guys have an awesome day. Thank you. I love it. At first, I was so thrown off. I was like, wait, Adore's makeup has always been good. What yeah. do you mean? I don't remember them like reading her makeup. But no, the makeup between Adore and I, that definitely was a very awkward moment. Mm -hmm. I think for everyone involved, I don't think uh, production thought that it would be as intense as it was. I think they thought it would be more lighthearted. Mm -hmm. Um but it was very intense. Basically, for those who don't know what we're talking about, they sat Adore and I down after the show had finished and had us rewatch highlight clips from the show together in the same room to see how we would react to it. And, you know, I basically like confronted Adore and was like, this really hurt my feelings. And she confronted me back and was like, well, you were fake. And so it was clear that neither one of us was going to budge on how we felt. Mm -hmm. And so it was just really awkward and also very, like, I think hurtful for the two of us. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember production basically, like, stopping it midway through and being like, okay, this is not, like, what we had in mind and you two need to go talk off camera. And that's exactly what we did. We left World of Wonder and went right across the street to Cabo Cantina and had some drinks and and talked it out. And, and I'm so grateful for that moment for sure, because I think that really started the, you know, healing process for the two of us. But yeah, it was very uncomfortable, very just awkward. It, it didn't it didn't yeah. flow like I like I said, like I think they had hoped. Um, 
And I never heard of Courtney and Jocelyn getting together to do that. I know several of the girls were put together to watch the show, but I don't mm -hmm. remember that pairing. So I think that might just be a rumor. Yeah. But yeah, definitely glad they learned their lesson and never did that again to anyone because that was definitely a, a challenge. Needless I to couldn't say. imagine that trying to like solve your own drama over yeah. like being forced in that situation. Ooh. Yeah, and like I said, I think they thought we would like be funny or yeah. like throw shade at each other, but like we both ended up in tears. So it was a, uh, it was pretty serious. Yeah, was all of that shown? Uh, I think they showed a clip of it in the reunion. Yeah, I don't really remember. I I don't watch my season, mm -hmm. so it's it's hard to say that was like a decade ago. Yeah, um, but I definitely do believe they showed part of that because uh, how else would the you know caller have yeah. known? Yeah. Well, I have another question about season six. Okay. Mm. There's been rumors that um, have been started by somebody named Bianca Del Rio. <laughs> so I need to know if this is true. Did she lip she sync lost. against you? She lost. She lost. She lost the lip sync against she you. She lost the lip sync to Candy, y'all. I don't know what she is talking about. I don't know why <laughs> she thinks anyone would believe that she would win over me, but... <laughs> I definitely won that, and they canned that lip sync because, you know, production needed her to win. Mm. And that's the end of that tea. End of the tea. <laughs> well, Laganja, it's time we take a break. Okay. And when we get back, we're going to get into this episode four of All Stars 8. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. See you in a bit. And welcome back to Queening Out with your girl, Miss Laganja Astranja. And Joseph Shepard. I think it's time that we uh, break down these Lukes. Ooh, breaking down some Lukes. Is the... it time to wear it or tear it? It's time to wear it or tear it. Ooh, I love this part. Let's get into Ask the World Turn. Ah. You know what I was waiting for? This what? Time? I was waiting for somebody to do a soap opera look and then turn around and show their ass. Okay. Like, as the world right, turn. Right, right, right. I, I get it, I get it. But it didn't happen that way. Yeah. But we sure got a lot of ass, 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 ass. We sure got a lot of ass, 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 ass. We sure did. First up was Miss James Mansfield. Now, she went the um, the route of, she was saying her Mexican heritage, yes. Mexican culture, and then she turns around and big booty Judy. She was giving us big booty Judy. You know, I liked that this was different for her, mm -hmm. right? I liked that this was, um, you know, something a little outside of her traditional yes. 1950s vibe. But I didn't love the look. I got to be honest. It just, I don't know. It it didn't bring it to the runway like I really wanted it to. And while she was giving us ass, I didn't really feel like that was the focal point of the look. And I felt like, you know, that was the sort of the theme of the runway. And that's what should have been the most recognizable. Mm -hmm. So for me, it is a tarot. I, I don't think I would wear this. Um, well, obviously, I couldn't wear this because I would get, you know, called you get, out for yes. appropriation. So I wouldn't wear it. Um, but yeah, I, I again appreciate how it was different for her. But overall, the look for me, it, it didn't hit. I couldn't agree with you more. This was the biggest tarot on the runway this evening. OK, wow. Um, <laughs> she took it. There. I, I will say I give James props for, you know, highlighting her culture. And I yeah. think that that's very important to do. Absolutely. I just believe that some of the choices of this outfit when the lighting hit it looked a little cheap like the yeah this material on the top of this that yeah. goes into the earring was a little like not wrinkled but it didn't it didn't reflect the light like i think she really hoped yes. it would yeah and there's also a lot of elements going on right like there's so much neck piece and then there's the trim on the white and yeah i also thought the white was a little uh interesting color choice in mm -hmm. with the combination i think maybe if she'd used the blue or that teal color it could have like looked more beautiful on her skin yeah Let's see next up we had miss darian lake now i learned which we can ask her about later. Okay. Because we do have Darian Lake on this show Ooh, today. I love when we get a zoom in. Ooh, ooh. Um, but I did hear that this dress was actually, or this outfit was actually Miss Kasha Davis's. And oh, she gave it to Darian. Interesting. Well, we'll definitely have to ask her about that. I mean, I actually love the look. I will say, again, it doesn't necessarily give me ass. That's not like the main focal point of the outfit. But I loved seeing her in a leotard. This is something I would totally wear. It's very much my vibe. I think the color looks gorgeous on her. I'm loving the red hair. So, yeah, it is a wear it for me. 
100% aware. I loved this. This is probably one of my favorite looks that Darian had on All Stars 8. Yeah. I think that she looks wonderful. Her makeup looks gorgeous. That hair on her looks gorgeous. And this outfit is something that you would not expect. So right. So that's what like adds that little extra layer. Sure. Looks great. Yeah, it looks so, it looks super great. And I love that even if this wasn't made for her, it looks like it was. It looks totally yes. custom tailored to fit her body. Ooh. Next up, we have the bus thrower, Alexis Michelle. The bus thrower? Yeah, she throws people in front of the bus. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Is the bus still running? <laughs> um, You know, I don't like it. I don't like it. I mean, I thought her ass looked amazing. Mm -hmm. And you see, she actually hit the prompt of the runway. But... I just thought it was too old. It was it was it was giving me maiden shoes. It was giving me, you know, like it just it just did it. I don't know. And it's like it's covered in rhinestones and it's beautiful and it's well constructed and she looks gorgeous. But it was a tarot for me. I didn't like it. You know, the way that you said that the other outfits weren't really giving you ass. Right. This really wasn't giving me ass either yes we did see her ass interesting but i i don't know what it is there's just something about this outfit that while it, it was looks giving gorgeous, you ass but not the world turns yes yeah i guess you would say yes right it gave me the ass but it didn't give me it didn't give you the turns. world turning around i think that this yeah. outfit is beautiful for a bridal runway or sure. something like that and yeah. i think that she looks absolutely gorgeous um, just the prompt and what it was, I wouldn't have gone with this personally. Yeah, it definitely was a, a sort of out there uh, take on this challenge, which I do appreciate that she thought outside the box. Um, and again, her ass looked amazing. That was obviously mm -hmm. her real ass. Like props to her for I love that. Like, yes, show off your real ass if it's sickening for this. But yeah, um, overall, the outfit, like I said, it just didn't speak to me and it, it just felt a little out of place. Yeah. Yeah. Would it have been better if she would have um, got some like cake icing and put it on her ass so then it's like a wedding cake? I'm being totally, that was a total joke. Oh, I'm like, I like the idea. Like she came out with a cake and then like sat in it and okay, Are let's we stop. We're, we're taking it too far. Very, very John we're Waters taking it now. Too far. <laughs> Candy Muse came out and I, I don't know who the designer for this is. I do know that. Aja, her season had a very similar look. Yes, I remember that. Um, with the hair. So I want to, I'm pretty sure that they probably called each other up and was a little. Hook me here. up, sis. Yeah. yeah. I thought that this was very creative and out of the box. I loved the balloon boobs. I loved the balloon ass. Um, I think that the one, <laughs> the one thing is that her dress did write up. Yeah. And I thought that it was part of it, but then Candy went online and Candy was like, can you imagine latex on top of latex that like it just rode right, up right. and it was hard to do? What did you think? I feel like you're not yeah, liking it. That is definitely one of my critiques is I thought the ass was a little high. So mm -hmm. I think, like you said, maybe it, it, it rode up as she was walking. But I actually love the outfit. I think it's a total wear it. I think, again, we finally got her in another new silhouette. Yes. I mean, yes, she stuck to her latex vibe, but she really took it and, and, and made it uh, super over the top. So I loved that. And I loved the, you know, color combination here. I think it looks really great on her skin. I love the cutesy little makeup. I thought she nailed it. Yeah, it's a total wear it for me. Do you have latex outfits? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. I don't get how anybody could be in something like this. It's too hot. It's too hard to put on. It rips easily. It's just like, I love a latex look, but yeah, definitely with the new hormone body, I'm not even trying it. No, <laughs> no. Maybe some latex accessories, but a full outfit girl, no. You're like, no. Nope. No. Nope. Too much. Too expensive. Too much work. No, thank you. Jessica Wilde comes out in this. Well, obviously it's a bodysuit with a corset. Yeah. And there was a little like tearaway that she had. Uh-huh. And she revealed her booty. Right. But it didn't give me ask the world turns. It didn't. No, it's a tear it for me. I think she looks great. It's a beautiful outfit. If we were seeing it on another day, it's great on her. But it just, it didn't give us enough ass. Yeah. It didn't put the double dollar sign in ass that I was looking for. Like Dal ass, Texas. Dal ass, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, it, too simple. Yeah. You know, I liked the little kiss on her cheek, but overall I wanted more. Yeah. And the makeup for me wasn't doing it. 
Was it not? N there was a moment that the light hit on her face, and it's just like I. She was washed out. Yes, and I think Michelle said it best. She was like, you know, add some highlighter, add something like that, because like these cameras have changed over the years. Sure. You need to yeah do that. Do you? Let me ask. When you are on television, uh -huh. is it a different type of way that you do your makeup? Um, I think with drag. No, I mean, yes, maybe be like not as much foundation, mm -hmm. you know, but as far as like the eye look goes, I think those pretty much stay the same. Like to me, I always think of when I'm on camera, like even on the pit stop, it's very high def. So you don't need to go as hard as you would okay. for the stage. So I think there is a little bit of pulling back and holding back, but overall we're doing drag. So mm -hmm. glitter, rhinestones, big lashes, things like that. They're going to be there. They're going to be present in both television and on stage. Um, but I, I can see what you're saying now that you're pointing that out. Her, her face does look a little washed out, especially with that lighter pink lip. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't mind it so much. I was okay. just more underwhelmed with the, with outfit, the outfit than I was the, the makeup or the hair. Cause I think, I think she looks beautiful. Yeah. Do you think Jimbo looks beautiful? I do. Yeah? I do. It was a total wear it for me. It was me. a total wear it. Yeah. Are you kidding? This outfit is so on point right now. Everyone's loving this thermal heat vibe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, what did she end up calling her ass titties? <laughs> what did she call it them? It was um, titty butt. What was titty it? Titty butt. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I loved it. It was so stupid. It was just so great. The way she sold it on the runway. I love that she's got big hair providing height to counterbalance all this body that she's serving. Yeah, I, I loved it. I loved the shoes. I love the platform. I mean, it's just giving you total drag as the world turns. Yes. You know, it really is meeting the prompt. And I love that she put boobs on her butt. I, so funny. It. I will say this total wear it for me. I think... Whoever she worked with on her package of looks. Agreed. Amazing. Phenomenal. She got the right tips at the right time. Yeah. Like how you said, like, she could have that perfect outfit, but the hair could be wrong. Like, so right. it's like everything was very, very, very conceptual. Thought out about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I loved the way she was reacting to the judges, too. You know, she's so smart. She's so witty. I just think she's definitely in the top. Yeah. She's she's gunning for for number one spot. She, I'm going to put this video in this video, um, but there was a video of Jimbo on, I guess, Friday or Saturday night at a viewing party, and she was with Brooklyn Heights. Okay. And she was wearing this outfit, and she tried to do a headstand. In the outfit? In the outfit, but she fell on her boobs. So Which ones? Those boobs, okay, the butt boobs. The butt boobs. The titty boobs. Yeah. So she fell on those, and then the camera like pans up, and then Brooklyn's like, Oh my God. But it is so good. The, the whole shade. audience was eating it. <laughs> Next up, we had Heidi in closet in her ass look. Yeah. I loved it. It's cute. It's a wear it. It was so creative. You know, at first I was confused. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, she's Eeyore. And then my best friend was like, yeah, right. He's a donkey. He's an ass. I was like, oh, Eeyore's my a donkey? God. Yeah, right. Isn't that an ass? Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. I just didn't know he was a donkey. I think so. Right. No, I'm pretty yeah, sure we're you're getting not the right. yes. We're yes. getting yes from our studio wow. audience. Yeah. So that's why I was like, well, that's so creative that she took it outside of the box and like was a literal ass. Um, I loved the makeup. I mean, I do think the outfit is a little simple, like the bra and panty mm -hmm. vibration. I wish that could have been a little bit more adorned with something. But overall, it's just a wear it for me because of how creative it is. I love the makeup of it all. And I definitely think it's one of her more memorable looks. Oh, yeah. And I love the tail. I love yeah. that she had that little pin in the tail, just like Eeyore. Yeah. Uh, I can see what you're saying about, like, the um, the bathing suit portion. Yeah. I think I would have loved it if it was just a one piece or something. So then this whole part's bedazzled. I would have liked some more bedazzling. Something but dazzling. I was thinking tassels. I Ooh, was thinking tassels. like just something because that is it's almost like we've got a crushed velvet bodysuit. And then this is giving me like a little cheap lycra mm. here. And that's why I'm like, oh, I would just wish she'd taken that further. But 
again, it's just so creative. It's totally nailing the prompt, and I think the makeup is super cool. Looks just like the cartoon. Next up, Miss Kahana Montrese coming in with the big, the big injectable. The pump, Mama. The She's pump. coming in with the pump. It's a total wear it for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> this queen is so freaking perfect. Like, I can't even take it. Like, every time she walks the runway, I'm just like, wow. And her real ass is so amazing. So I'm glad she stuck with it. And yeah, it's just giving the doctor we all wish and want to see. So I loved it. Total wear it. This is like the the um, futuristic porno. Oh, okay. That's what it's giving me. Okay. I love this color on her. Gorgeous. I think she looks absolutely gorgeous. I love that she showed her ass and did that. And total wear it. Yeah, total wear it. Next up, we had La La Re. This was my biggest tarot. No, you already said that for James. So which one which one is it? This one. Okay. This one's my biggest tear. And yeah. I'll tell you why. Why? The color of the mesh. The mesh was is not the color of her skin, which I know that sometimes people may not go for that, but the issue became because it was lighter than her skin, she was sweating. And the sweat ended up making it look really wet in some areas. Interesting. Okay. I didn't know. I don't know that I clocked that, <laughs> but I definitely clocked that it was a tarot for me as well. Um, just too simple. You know, I mean, it's not a bad outfit. Again, I, I, I actually probably would wear this outfit out. Um, but for this challenge and, and for what you're up against, you know, with Jimbo's titties on her butt, it's just like... It just was lacking. It didn't really have that much imagination. It didn't take it to the next level. It wasn't giving me all star, you know. Um, yeah, it was a good try, but I don't think it, it it fully met the mark. I agree. Of all stars eight. I agree. Well, Miss Laganja, we may be done with our top nine, but we are not done because we have the fan the games. games. Is this going to be your first time seeing the fame it games? It is. <laughs> yes, it Because is. the fame games, I think it's very... It's on Untucked, yeah, right? Yeah, and I think that's stupid. Yeah, I don't watch Untucked. I think that the you should be in the main show. Right. Miss Monica Beverly Hills. Okay. I mean, I literally just shot in a dress like this yesterday. So um, it's giving store-bought because okay. I have this dress. I think she looks gorgeous for sure. I love the hair. This is very different for her, and I'm loving the makeup. But yeah, it's just, it feels like a store bought dress, which I just think for all stars is a no no. You gotta take it to the next level, and it almost I don't know if it is just like my dress, but like is the ass fully out? No, right? It's still it's got kinda, the you it's still got the fringe yes. on it. Yeah. So again, not enough ass. I need to see full bare ass, mama. Yeah. Moon the doll. I thought she looked gorgeous in this. I do like the hair. I did like the color on I her. I love the color, yeah. I think, though, there wasn't ass, really. I did want to see more ass. And I did want to see more, like, maybe some more sparkle or something. Sure. Yeah, I, it, she, it looks like she's got some sparklies on her titties, right, underneath there? Yeah. No, it, it's a beautiful look. She looks gorgeous. I saw it on Instagram, and I loved it there. But I don't think it's really giving us ass Fast. the world turns. Is Nisha Lopez giving you ass the world turn? I mean, she looks good. I'm not going to lie. I wish there was more ass in the back, mm -hmm. but it's a wear it for me. She looks good. I like this on her. I do. A no, it for me. It's a tear it. Okay. Because mm -hmm. there is a little ass. I do wish that there was more ass because Nisha has a nice ass. I she does. Nisha, you have a nice ass. <laughs> Seen it at the club multiple times. Oh. Um, this. This look to me, I don't like that it's all one color. And oh, I bow do. Ties one color and I do. One color. It's so classic. It's, just not, it's not for it's me. It's chic. I love the finger wave. I mean, she's giving us clavicle for days. I like it. I think it's beautiful. I just think there should have been more ass. More ass. And last up, we have Miss Kasha Davis. Okay, look at her with her ass out. <laughs> I mean, I like it. I wouldn't wear it. I would not wear this. But I think for her, yeah, it works. I mean, she took it there. She's got a nice little red pop accessory. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't wear it, truly. But for her, I think she did good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I want to see what she would have looked like if the rumors are true about Darian's outfit. 
and Darian's yes. look. Oh I yeah, I want to know what that she would look, look like. In I bet Darian's she would have looked sickening in that too. Because this is also a very Darian look. True. Yeah. So I wonder if they just did a little switchy swatchy, or who knows? Okay. Who knows? I, I do think that this goes with her Miss Kasha Davis totally. demeanor, and we get the ass in kind of a comical way because she pulled away the little okay little flaps to show it. Cute. But it's a tarot for me. Yeah. And what did you think about the challenge this week? Okay, let's get into this challenge. The girls were split into three groups yep. by popping balloons in between the... Which haven't we done before? We've done so many times. I'm like, and I feel I'm, like we've done this so many times. Can I say I'm uncomfortable with it? Are you? Yes. Why? I don't know necessarily what it is, but like just the fact that... I'm not saying that they're forcing these girls to do this, yeah. but it does feel like a force sometimes. Okay. Like... What if a girl didn't want to do that? Right. Like, and I think that it is a little I like. I think oh. they all want to do that. <laughs> to be honest, those guys are hot. I'm pretty sure they're okay. Maybe it's the <laughs> pit crew we should feel bad for. Yes, they're the yes, ones who maybe. have to do it. <laughs> but <laughs> I, um, so they had to basically pop these balloons in between their ass or whatever. I thought it was funny when Jimbo wanted them to go at it. Did you see that? I don't remember. He like got down on his knees and then he like put the balloon like here. So he wanted them to smash it as he had it like in his oh mouth. Oh my God. He's wild, <laughs> wild. But uh, we ended up with three teams. We had Alexis Darian and James Mansfield. We had Jessica Wilde, Jimbo and Candy Muse. And we had Heidi and Closet, Kahana Montrese and La La Ree. And Darian came up with the idea of Get Off lost. Island, yeah. which is basically like lost meet some dead celebrities on I didn't understand this yeah but it kept me laughing because it was so stupid it was so stupid yes it definitely was my second favorite of the three really yeah yeah my first was uh candy and um Jessica and and Jimbo and Jimbo I thought theirs was the best for sure theirs was the funniest Mostly because of Jimbo. Yeah. I thought Jimbo really sold that. I found Heidi to be a standout on her own. Yes. She was freaking hysterical. I don't know what that look was, <laughs> but it really tickled me pink. I thought she was so funny. It was just so bizarre. Um, and yeah, I felt like Kahana really faded in the background of this one. I thought she actually was going to be in the bottom. Um, but yeah, I I, uh, I thought... Um, I thought Darian's group was second best. James Mansfield is Marilyn Monroe. I was laughing. It was so bad. It was so bad. It was like, <laughs> this is not Marilyn Monroe at all. <laughs> no. But it was funny. No. And then there were just so many things about that sketch that I just was finding so comical. I, I was also extremely high, so that's probably yeah. why, mm -hmm. too. Also, I would like to say that my boyfriend, um, every time he's high now, does your... Yeah, I'm high. <laughs> from when you were on Sissy That Talk. Did you... Do you no, I don't that? remember that. I'm gonna have to show you after this. Okay, but it's every single time. I he'll love be it. on the phone with people, and then he'll be like, "Yeah, I'm high," and I'm like, <laughs> "Oh." Um, I love when I create catchphrases without even realizing I'm doing that. Yeah, and yeah. then you realize six months later that you created a catchphrase. Love it. I enjoyed the um, Jessica Wilde, Jimbo, and yeah. uh, Candy Muse best friends for never seen. I think the most. I think that they all did a very good job of, uh, you know, like in company. Like, wow. Okay. Love yeah. That. They did a great job of filling in their characters. Yes. Yeah. Encompassing their characters. And they pick something really recognizable that I think we could all relate to. You know, Mean Girls, Heathers, that's just classic to the brand. It's classic to gay culture. So I thought that was smart choice. I know that there was some talk of like, well, it's not so original, but sometimes if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yes. And that worked. And then they amplified it in a way. Jimbo is a crazy psychotic Hysterical. killer. I will say that this is the killer before Jimbo killed me in my music video. Ah, I think this was okay. the pre, this was that character before the prequel. Yeah, this was the prequel. Okay. And my music video was the the sequel. Okay. So go check that out to see Jimbo yeah, right? kill me. And then we had Run Queen Run with Heidi, Kahana, and Lala. Um, the most chaotic and craziest thing. And I will say that. I believe that if their storyline would have been a little bit better, that they may have placed higher. Maybe. I didn't understand the tucking panty bit. I, I didn't understand most of it, to be honest. I just was laughing at Heidi because she just uh, looked so crazy. So, funny. so crazy. Oh my God, that was so funny to me. 
I and being high even funnier. Yeah. Yeah, she literally walked out with that the wig little, all the way back here, the two little ears, and oh my god, so funny, so funny. I I would watch this show. I I think yeah. that it would be a show that I would love to watch. Hi, um, I think though, like looking back on it, that Kahana wasn't no hundred percent. Her, her and Lala faded in comparison, yeah. you know. And when you have somebody that's so strong, you need to either rise get to, their, to level. their level or be on a grounded level. Play a counterpoint, yep. yeah. And that didn't happen. So I do think that it was funny. Um, I just didn't get it all the way to because Kahana Montrese had these tucking panties that were supposed to make her like awesome and amazing or whatever. And they figure out about it and then they want them. But Kahana is always holding them. This is what I didn't understand. She's always holding them. And then when the Heidi and Lala get the panties and then they like smell them, they pass out. Right. And then she's like, Oh, it's not about smelling. It's about wearing. But I'm like, she never actually wore these. Like, she wasn't mm, wearing these. Interesting. So her whole yeah. persona wouldn't necessarily work. Right. Yeah, I think you're thinking about it a lot uh, too in depth. I do that a lot. Yeah, I do a lot of too in depth, mama. It's just a silly little skit. But yeah, I hear you. Yes, continuity wise. Okay. A little rough. I just get read every single time. <laughs> read me, Ganja. No, no. I mean, you know, you're right in what you're saying. I'm just like, I don't think it's that serious. No, it's not that serious. <laughs> and we end up with our maxi challenge winner, which ends up being Jimbo. Yeah. Wins well $5, deserved. $5,000. Yes. And a lip sync against Chanel. They brought Chanel. You literally were talking about I season one. I felt like one. I willed it. I like yeah. willed it to happen. Yeah, I was so excited to see her back. Although I will say this lip sync to me was very meh. It was beyond meh. It, there was nothing that memorable about it. I was a little disappointed. I mean, I feel like if Jimbo had had a reveal, she would have won. Mm -hmm. I felt like she embodied the song more, mm -hmm. but... I am happy we got to have Chanel back. I just wish it would. I, I was just like so gagged when she was there. So I was just expecting, I don't know, like when her Medusa hat fell off, it was like so iconically, you know, intense. And so I, I was really hoping for a moment like that for her. Um, but yeah, overall, I just thought the lip sync was very there. We know Jimbo is not known for the performance when it comes to the lip sync. And um, yeah. So it just left me a little disappointed, I must say. Also, what are these songs? Yeah. I'm not saying this is a bad song because I love this song. Sure. But when a song is repetitive in the same words over and over again. Right. Just well, that like, makes it easier for the lip sync people, just saying. They have a lot of songs to learn. Yeah. So if there's a repetitive one, I'm like, I get it. Because that at least helps the girls like be able to not. You know what I mean? It's a lot yeah. to memorize. You're given this huge list of songs and you have to be ready at any time. Although now it's if you win. So I guess a lot of girls probably don't learn the songs. <laughs> Shade, insert rattlesnake. I just keep thinking about like Bad Reputation, keep saying Bad Reputation, that She Bop, I Bop, You Bop song was uh -huh. all about bopping. And yeah, yeah, yeah. The same thing. And I just think that they're not amazing songs to lip sync to, that you're not, you're, we're not getting a, a physical performance. Right. You know, that right. was a great song. I got blessed. I got blessed. I did get blessed. Yeah. Imagine if you would have like got she bop, girl. I I would have she bopped it. I tell you what, no matter what they would have given me, I still would have given. But yeah, thank God I got a good song. It's true. What's the slowest song you've lip synced to? Well, I do do ballads occasionally, and my favorite ballad to do is um, "Here's Where I Stand" from the movie Camp. Wow, <laughs> I get real emotional. I cry every time. Yeah, it's my it's my go to ballad when I'm tired. <laughs> Are you about to cry? No. Oh, okay. I was about to say. <laughs> no, we're good today. No tissues needed here. And then we had our bottom three, Alexis Michelle, Darian Lake, and James Mansfield. Yeah. And on the runway, Alexis Michelle threw Darian Lake. She showed it. And she threw James Mansfield under that bus. She showed it. She said, I'm not having anything to do with this. They were the ones who came up with the idea. I did not come up with the idea. You, get, you, you do what you got to do. When you're in the hot seat, I mean, anything goes. And this is a game. So I liked it. It was good TV. I appreciated she, the drama. Alexis is bringing good TV. She is. And somebody took a clip from her when she was on season nine. Uh -huh. Nine, yes. Yeah. Um, And she did the exact same thing in a group challenge. Oh. So they were on the runway and main stage. And she literally was like, 
Um, I was not a part of this in this group and did the exact same thing. I was laughing so hard. I was like, I love that she's keeping it up. She's keeping You know, you can take the girl out of season nine, but you can't take the season nine out of the girl. No. <laughs> was there any moments in season six that I was perfect. You were perfect. I was gorgeous and I look like Linda Evangelista. There you go. Just like that uh lip sync song against Bianca. Exactly. Candy. Candy. I killed it. Well, let's take a break. And when we get back, we have a special guest for you. Yay, my season six sister. I cannot wait. We'll be right back. We are back. It's queening out. And we have a very special guest. My season six sister. <gasps> it's oh, Darian, Darian Lane. Lane. Hi. Ooh, ooh, hello. Wow. <laughs> Dip into Did these waters, honey. Mm, the cool, refreshing, and slightly poisoned waters. <laughs> <laughs> Not slightly poisonous. Oh, well, you know, Kodak did a job on us up here in Rochester, New York. <laughs> okay, I know that's right. How are you, sister? It's so good to see you. I'm doing really well. I'm doing really well, you know, enjoying the day. The beautiful weather has finally arrived, and that really puts me in a good mood for once. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was so nice to see you for about three seconds at DragCon. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So busy. Everybody everywhere. You were like running uh, little dabbers around. You know, it's it's a lot. You know, making sure she didn't poop on the pink carpet. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, you, I can't say the same for myself. <laughs> you know, this is why, like, I could never own a dog because I gag when I have to pick up my own shit off the front lawn. So... <laughs> I cannot. Oh, are you like divine though? And do you taste it or no? <laughs> Ew, no. But you always like to taste your own brew. Yeah. Okay. Well, Gross. I just want to say, I think you did so freaking mm -hmm. incredible on the show this year. And I was so happy to have you back on my television screen where you belonged. Oh, thank you. Had you had some of my thank favorite you. looks. I mm -hmm. loved the Billy eyelash look. That was thank so you. amazing to me. <laughs> so unexpected. I thought you nailed that to the right. T. And I also really loved your uh, net gala look. The basketball hoop was genius. Yeah. Yeah, Genius. Dallas did an amazing job on that. And it just was so stupid and silly and camp and drag and everything I love about drag. Yeah, I, and I love that you really brought that this season. I love that you were true to who you were from season six, mm -hmm. but I really felt like you were super elevated and you really brought such like iconic, memorable looks. Yeah, I mean, just just wait till you see the fame games, the queen of the fame games. So, you know, I'm, I'm uh, pleading for your vote right now and I'm going to be smear campaigning everybody else. As you should be. Darian, I would love to know from you, from season six to now, did you feel like you had to hold back on any of your comedy chops or anything because you were afraid of getting canceled or like how the fans have changed from your season to now? Like, did you feel like you had to hold back at all? No, because um, I have nothing to lose. I mean, really, like, I'm not like super popular or whatever, especially because of what whatever transpired with season six. So I've got nothing to lose. I don't give a fuck. Uh, you like me, you don't like me. I'm going to I'm not going to try and make the people who don't like me like me. I'm only going to try and please the people who already do. Those are the ones who I know are my diehard fans and stuff. And, you know, we all evolve and change as we get older, but you know, I think I'm still true to myself and everything. And and I think I was able to, like, show how I did elevate some of the areas where I was weaker, you know, especially with fashion, because that was never really afforded to somebody of my size, you know, before. So, well, you you killed it every time you came out with a fashion look like Laganja was saying. And I also know that at Roscoe's, you I heard that there was a little rumor that the dress that you are the outfit that you had for the ask the world turns was actually miss kasha davis's was that true yeah yeah so she had gotten it from the drag stop and um she didn't really like i think the way that it looked on her or fit on her and i tried it on and i was like oh that looks really cute and this was like um probably about a month or two before uh i went away for the show and so it just so happened that i was like oh i have this and this would work and then I had another outfit as well that, you know, plant, you know, I had a lot of backups just in case. So, um, Smart. yeah. Um, so I just, you know, threw things around and stuff to see what would fit and what works. And, you know, I always had a look, but then a backup look too. So 
were the were the um, constraints on packing the same as it was when we were on season six? Because, you know, I'd spilt some right. tea on an earlier episode about Courtney bringing those giant wings and us being mm-hmm. like, uh, that doesn't fit in a bin. So I'm just right. wondering, is it still the same or are they a little bit more lenient with the all stars? I think they're probably lenient, more lenient now, you know, so. Um, so, yeah, I think they're a little bit more lenient. You get a little more. uh more space and everything because they they understand that you know it's 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 a new ball game now you know so right and um, do you get more time because i also think back when we were on season six we had like what two weeks to put our looks Uh, together i know it was there was not a lot it was still not enough time i'll say that um (laughs) yeah we did get more time but still not enough especially because like you start reaching out to you know designers and everything and i was reaching out to designers like year after year, because Kasha Davis was always like, girls are getting calls. We've got to get stuff made, like, you know, come up with ideas and what could be like possible for a runway. So um, we were always trying to reach out to designers and, and nailing one down that's going to do something for me, you know, whether they are they don't know if I have the budget or whatever. And I didn't even know like what things cost. I asked Courtney and I was like, what do things even cost? She's like, well, like $5,000 for like an amazing look. I mean, 10 if you want it to be epic. I was like, oh, okay. So, um, you know, when you get the list of all the different outfits, you're like, holy shit. But then reaching out to the designers and everything and you have them working on stuff and they're like, oh yeah, don't worry. I'll have it to you by, I don't know, like whatever today is, you know, May 29th. Uh-huh. Yeah. And because <laughs> uh, I can't get specifics because I'll get a phone call from them and be like, <laughs> anyway. Oh. So, um, you know, if, if you're like, oh yeah, I'll have it to you by then. And then like, oh yeah, I'll ship it out two weeks before. And then on the 28th, they're like, yeah, um, it's it's. I'll have to overnight it to you, and you're like, okay, great. I know. You know, people really don't so- realize how much work it is to get ready for Drag yeah. Race. That's why oh, one so of the, the main things that you're talking about. I'm like, this is why I don't go back. Is because it's so <laughs> no, stressful. you should. It's you so definitely expensive. should. I think if you would have said yes, they wouldn't have had me on this year. I no, bet. no. Well, then I'm really glad I said no because <laughs> I loved having you on. It really, Aww. like I said, it's just so nice to see my season six sisters back on the show. I saw something recently that said basically anyone from season six who goes back always goes home in the first half. So I think we are (laughs) cursed. It's because they're out to get us, really. I think that's what it is. They're out (laughs) to get us. You know, we come from the best season of the most amazing people. And yeah, and they're trying to get us, you know, like, I mean, every year they always do like the reading challenge in the beginning and the talent show. And I'm like, I totally would have killed that. So I I know you would have. You know what? She wasn't great at fashion during her season. Let's start with a fucking fashion show. I'm like, curses! <laughs> you horrible people. Are you trying to get rid I, of me? I, what would you What would you do for the talent show? Are you allowed to tell us? Um, you know, like I would do something where I excel. You know, um, I could do you know, like giving blowjobs and stuff. I'm really amazing at that. <laughs> I could suck a watermelon through a garden hose. You know, I didn't get this big not knowing how to eat. And so, you know, I mean, that would be definitely one of those, you know, <laughs> um, you know, that comedy epic, has always honestly. been in my wheelhouse, you know, so stand up or something, um, you know, even I, you know, I can carry a tune. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Do, do, should we expect any new, uh, m- music coming from you soon? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. That's another thing that costs so much money for like whatever you get in return. Preach. Like, well, Darian, you also have your comedy special out now, right? Absolutely. Altered Boy. Yeah. So for me, it was like trying to put together like a one woman show that has a lot of humor in it. So I also wanted to have like touching and, and real moments about my real life. So, you know, I love, you know, I was very proud of it. And especially it, it all came together and I was putting that together uh, simultaneously with some other projects at the same time. And then, you know, even... Uh, the ideas of putting together drag race at the same time was it was hectic and you know it's like okay where am I gonna go and you know so it was how, it was a lot of work your special you can uh download it for purchase or um or for rent Amazon I think has it and Apple TV and uh Comcast and a whole bunch of the other ones or whatever so yeah well congrats on that that's major yeah I know and there was a nice little paycheck that went with it too Hey, we love when our yeah. art makes us some money, honey. Right, exactly. And then, you know, it's like, because um, I've always been a starving artist, really. <laughs> I mean, look at me. I'm wasting away to practically nothing. And so um, so it's it's great to have that. And then also have it sponsored, like, you know, or get, um, get me involved and get my creative juices going for other things, you know. 
Um, there were some jokes and stuff that I've written for other queens, you know, whether it's for the Haters Roast Tour or even for their All Stars run. And so it's it's something that I like to do, uh, make myself laugh and make other people laugh. And and um, so, yeah, it's fun. Now, I have to I have to ask another fun little fact from season six that people probably don't know about is when we had a day off, we were able to finally get haircuts and Darian yeah. actually gave me and several other girls haircuts on the really? show. Yes. Yeah. So I'm wondering, are you still are you still uh, cutting the hairs and, and doing the do's? <laughs> I am still. Yeah. It's because, you know, when you I've been doing hair since like 94 and those people are like my friends, not just like clients. And, you know, I have a smaller clientele to make it manageable and a lot less days of the week or whatever. But it's also because I have to work as much as I can because I have nobody to take care of me. Um, so I'm all alone. Um, <laughs> I get it. So same, so, you know, make as much money as I can. So maybe one day I'll be able to retire and not have to move into like, uh, Bianca's guest room or something. <laughs> <laughs> Although if you're going to move in somewhere, that would be a great place to move in. It's nice. It's pretty awesome. It is yeah. nice. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I especially just remember that moment because, you know, we're usually kept on what they call ice, which mm -hmm. basically means we can't yeah. talk to one another. And when we're not filming, we're sequestered into our rooms. And so that day was really special because it allowed Darian and I some time to like actually get to know each other and hang out without yeah. a camera in our face. And she yeah. obviously made me feel so much more attractive by cutting my hair, which was so kind of her to offer to do. And so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I'll For always free. remember that moment. It was very <laughs> special to me. I didn't even charge the girls. <laughs> she did it. No, she did it. Watch. No. You're now going to get an invoice in the mail. Okay. From, from season six. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. Darian, you had a few challenges which um, you miss out on. I'm very sad that you're missing out on Snatch Game. And I know that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Right. And because so many your people. Snatch Game from season six was Amazing. iconic. Yep. And um, underrated. Yeah. Paula Deen. Of course. Yeah, um, and then I know that you have. We won't know what you do until the fame games happen because I, I heard that there's going to be some fame game snatch gaming that Ooh. we may be seeing. Oh, this is new to me. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm sure that like some of us will. <laughs> some of us will post. Yeah, uh, some of us will post like probably what we would have done and stuff. Um, you know, for the snatch game, so you'll get to see that I guess next week. Yeah, on Friday, so you get to see us post what we would have done. Uh, there was actually, a, a you know, they always want you to have something and have a backup and all that, which is great. Um, and so, yeah, there was a, a couple of choices. The The person that I was probably going to do is probably because the other choice ended up getting uh, done by somebody else. So. Ah. I know. The tea has That's been what, spilled, honey. You know, they want to make sure that we don't um, conflict or whatever or, or repeat, but then sometimes they like to have, you know, two queens doing the same thing, you know. What you're going to do is not exactly what you are going to do. You know, what was it that Tia okay, said? Okay, what you want to do wanna... isn't necessarily what you're going to do. <laughs> so good. Yeah. There was a lot of things. Like, I think I even said, like, when we were doing the uh, the ball challenge where we were making stuff, I opened the box and said, take this shit back to Party City where it belongs. But um, I think they're all closing. I love the so. iconic references. That's yes. Yeah, they're a bunch of them, like even like with my uh, my milk walk on, like I sort of did like a spilled milk th type thing as well. But I was also saying I was like skim milk because when I walked into the room originally on season six, milk says, hi, I'm milk. I'm like, oh, hi, I'm heavy cream. <laughs> so then that's why I wanted to do a callback to that as well. I love the old references for the for the Me old too. shows, old TV shows like season six. From 10 years ago. No, we're not old. We're just established. Fingers crossed. I dropped dead. No, and, no fingers crossed. No. That I yeah. I always tell people, I'm like, buy my merchandise now because if I drop dead, it goes up in value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, Darian, plug yourself right now. Yeah, of course. I have merchandise. You can uh, find it through my link tree or through my big cartel store or whatever. And uh, I even uh, decided to sell um, knockoff uh, Darian Lake shirts from my Billie Eilish look. Love it. Smart. Very smart. Also, I want to say, Darian, I actually thought that your scene was pretty funny. I did too. Which one? <laughs> this week. Oh, I know. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. The, um, you know, it's it's not it's bad enough that I had to come up with the entire concept and and then also you know perform the best in it, but then to get thrown under the bus. Oh, 
So now I'm playing the fame games. And she's playing the blame games. Oh, but no, I I totally agree. Yeah. I honestly yeah, yeah. was like, why did they put her in the bottom this week? But you know, know how they do, girl. I know. I tell you, son of a bitch. They got Miguel. It's they okay. Got they got Miguel. Miguel. Yeah. You never know. You never know. Well, we will definitely be tuning into the fame games. Mm-hmm. We are rooting for you and we love you. And as Joseph said, thank you Aww. so much for joining us today. Of course. And give everybody my love there. Bye, sis. Bye. This is the end of the episode. What another great episode of Queening Out. Thank you, as always, Joseph, for being here with me today for Rue viewing RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars 8. We are getting... We're getting down there. We're, We're getting, getting closer to a winner. We're starting to we really are. get close to the the cream. The cream are that's rising. Are you feeling rising. better than you did with episode one? Yes. But still not your favorite. I mean, I don't know. I just feel like I my whole life is RuPaul's Drag Race. Mm-hmm. So until things really switch up and just go so out of left field, like, you know, it's good. I'm enjoying it. The girls are doing good. It's fun. It gives us something to talk mm-hmm. about. Is it my favorite show? No. No. I was watching um, um The Ultimatum last night, uh-huh. Queer Love. Oh, girl, it's so good. I mean, I just, you know, I just think, like I said, there's so much drag race. It's so much about everything I do. So, you know, I, I mean, it's fun. I sit around with my best friends. You know, we smoke. We watch the show. We have a good time. It's a good kiki. But it's just not the most, like, pushing forward. Like, mm-hmm. like again, like, when I w- look back at season one, I'm like, wow, this show was so unique and so in its own direction. Mm-hmm. So I just wish we would get a little bit more of that. I- I'm tired of seeing the same plug in place. It seems similar challenges, similar vibes. Popping balloons. It, right. Like, it just, it's, it's time, I think. I think it needs a facelift. Well, on that note, let <laughs> us know how you would facelift RuPaul's Drag Race yeah. in our emails at... Lagan Joes at Gmail. That's L A N J O E S at Gmail.com. Or you can leave us a great voicemail. We love hearing those. And that's at 805 624 5402. Until next time, I'm Joseph Shepard. I'm Lagan Joe Strancho. And this has been Queening, Queening Out. Out. Bye. Bye.